ones who maybe are, don't have a home to go to, who will suffer with grief or conflict. Lord, we ask that you would draw near to them in a special way. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you would shine your light more brightly than ever before into their life and that they would have eyes to receive and to see you. Father, for our world that looks to the hope um, of a potential vaccine, we pray, Lord, that you would um, help those um, figuring that out, that there would be um, a vaccine to help us with this, this virus, Lord, but also that as the world looks to hope, um, that they would indeed see you and know you as the ultimate hope and the ultimate light of life. So, Father, we thank you for who you are, and we pray these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Well, welcome if you've joined online since uh, we started, or welcome if you've come in since we started. It's lovely to have you here in this slightly different carol service. And um, we're going to come to our icebreaker now. And it has two parts, okay? Uh, so the, the first part, you just chat to the person around you. You can just turn your chair, stay in your seats. And if you're online, you can do it in the chat. So the first part is this. What is the favorite or worst item in a Christmas dinner? Okay, so you can go for favorite or worst. So turn to the person next year or around you, behind you, and just share what is the favorite or worst part in a Christmas dinner. Okay, okay. Now, part two. Part two of the icebreaker. I've got you guys on gallery view so I can see you. Now, this requires participation. So uh, you have to vote. Uh, if you stand up, it means that this uh, thing is underrated. Okay, so you're basically saying we think this is amazing and it doesn't get enough credit if you stand up. If you stay seated, it means um, it's a, it's, it is overrated and we don't want to hype it up anymore. You know, this is about items in a Christmas dinner. Yeah, we're doing this, people. And if you have your arms out, it means it is justly rated. So you're not for it or against it. You think it's fair. Okay, so if you stand up, you're saying this is underrated. We want more of this in our world. If you stay seated again, this is overrated. We don't want any more. If you put your arms out, you go, we're bang on. Okay, so everyone online and in person, we're going to go through six different items on a, on, a, on a dinner, and we'll see what happens. So the first one is a turkey. Could you uh, vote? Do you think a turkey is justly rated, arms out, overrated, in which case you stay seated or underrated, stand up? We have an arm at all. We have someone standing, some arms out. Oh, look, a couple of standers. On the whole, people are either negative or neutral. i just check in online here. Matthew's got hands in the air. He looks like he's worshipping, which is a bit strange. Okay, uh, sit down for that one. Next one, Brussels sprouts. Does anyone think? Okay, we got, oh, what a surprise. I was expecting everyone to say seated. People think these are underrated. We've got a few people with arms out there. We've got some standers online. Fantastic. Okay, next one, uh, turnips. Does anyone like a turnip? Oh, oh, Shannon's gone for turnip. Yeah, we have a few turnip lovers there. There needs to be a few turnip lovers in the world, but not many, because, yeah. Okay, carrots. I think, I think carrots are very underrated. I think stand up, but I'm on my own. No, my kids, good, I've taught them well. Everyone's going, they're fair game. They're fair. Oh, Maffy and Emma are up. Who else have we got? Todd and Celeste, very good. Okay, roast potatoes. Surely everyone thinks these are underrated. Yes, we have a, mainly a standing. But don't give in to peer pressure if you're seated. You enjoy your, 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 your seating. Okay, last one. Pigs in blankets. Are they underrated, overrated, or justly rated? If they're underrated, you stand up. Justly rated. Oh, I'm surprised. There we go. Okay, good. Now, you've had a bit of exercise. Do grab a seat. Uh, so a bit of church news. Oh, this is the moment the children are going to head out, and they're going to prepare for next week, which is our family carols. So uh, Shannon and uh, Hannah are going to lead them. Uh, so uh, good timing, Burwells. Come, come, come. Um, Great to have you. So they're going to be preparing for next week. Um, just a little note on hybrid church. So lovely to have so many of you online. I can't quite see you around 35 or something. Lovely to have you. So um, if you sign up and then cannot make it, our, our plea to you is that you cancel online. So actually messaging Vanessa is not very helpful. Uh, it's my fault. I said to do it. But uh, because uh, she can't then, we can't see who's on the waiting list and let them in. So we have a waiting list. So if you sign up, please come. If you can't come, cancel so we can let those that wanted to come, uh, come. So that's just about the Otherwise, we'll be online. Um, so do get signing up for next week. We're trying to give priority to those who are on the waiting list who couldn't come this week for next week. 
The Christmas schedule, uh, we have a family carols next week, and then um, the week after, we're going to do a Christmas Eve service online. So next week, I'm wearing a Christmas jumper this week, but you're all supposed to wear Christmas jumpers of some kind, and if they are made, they're going to be more favorable with the judges to win the Christmas jumper competition. So do, uh, do bring your Christmas jumper next week, and then online on the 24th at 7.30, we'll have a Christmas Eve, just a 45-minute or less uh, service to prepare for Christmas Day. Um, okay, a couple more things. The care packs, so we're just doing care packs. If you'd like to receive a care pack, please sign up. Um, and if you want to be buddied with someone, because maybe you're in Dublin this Christmas and you want to be buddied, let us know and we'll buddy you up. Um, so we need to know by midnight tonight if you'd like a, uh, a care pack. We wanted to let you know that uh, Asset, we supported, they work with uh, those affected by HIV and we were supported within our city groups to raise money, to provide hampers for them this Christmas, and we said we'd match it. And uh, through our city groups, we raised 1,300, and we said we'd match that, so that's 2,600. So thank you. And each city group will have received a profile, so, so uh, you know, a couple or a family that you can pray about uh, that that hamper will be going to. In a similar vein, uh, we are trying to partner with the Lighthouse. So these cards, if you haven't finished it, do just write a personal message. This will be given to a homeless person this week who will be receiving a hamper, and we can give them a message of, of goodwill and good wishes and God's love and a Bible verse and a prayer or whatever you feel comfortable to put in. And just, you know, you can sign it from yourself and those at Christ City Church that are going to be praying and thinking of you. So just leave those on your seats. They have asked if anyone can play music on Saturday the 19th between 4 and 6 p.m. They're going to be giving out their equivalent of a Christmas dinner. And I... We haven't been able to source anyone, so if you know someone or you can do it and are willing to play uh, for those homeless people that are coming for a Christmas dinner, then do get in contact with me. Final thing, if you're interested in doing our internship uh, next year or in September, so January or September, uh, do let us know. Uh, we'd love to have you involved. We're now going to have our Bible reading from Matthew chapter 1. It will come on the screen, or you can follow along in your Bible. And uh, Karina is going to come and read that to us. Matthew 1, verses 18 to 25. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to the public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Thank you, Karina. Uh, Isaac is going to come and speak now from that passage, so over to you. Amazing. I wonder if any of you guys have ever played the game Secret Santa. You know, where you and a group of friends, you put a name into a hat and then, and then you pull one out and then you get a gift for that person. Now, I think a lot of us have played it. I, I quite enjoy it. I'm playing it again this year with my mates. And I definitely enjoy the bit where I get the gift. You know, when someone gives me the gift, I think everyone can agree that's fun. It's, it's the bit where I have to buy the gift for someone that I struggle with. I think. In general, there's kind of two types of people in the world, isn't there? There's people who are good at getting gifts, and then there's people who are bad at getting gifts. I wonder what type of you are. Unfortunately, I'm definitely not that great at getting gifts. I think, I think back to last year, and I got my friend, it was, it was Nutella and coffee beans, which I bought in the center on the way. Like, on any level, that just sucks as a present. Like, I'm so sorry to her that I got that. It's just terrible. It was obviously because it was Centra, not spa. Um, but so if you're gonna play, don't play with me, basically is what I'm trying to say. But I wonder who you would want to play with. 
who hypothetically would be the best person to play Secret Santa with? Well, if we're going along that hypothetical, it's, it's got to be God. Like, hear me out here, you have unlimited money, unlimited power, time, knowledge. You'd be expecting something pretty epic, something pretty good. Now, what if I told you that actually we kind of had already played this game, a, a, a cosmic game of Secret Santa with God, that Christmas time, this is getting cheesy, Christmas time 2,000 years ago is when we played Secret Santa with God, and he gave us the best gift we could have asked for, although it probably wasn't what we were expecting. Because you see, 2,000 years ago, God gave us the best gift he could. It was a baby born in a manger named Jesus. And so I'm going to try to talk about this based in this passage that we've just read. Uh, Just a little bit of context about what's going on. So it's written by a guy named Matthew. He was a tax collector, then became a disciple of Jesus, followed him around for about three years. And then this is how he begins his biography of the life and works of Jesus. Now, it's unashamedly supernatural. Like, There's an angel, it comes to Joseph in a dream, tells him these names to name this baby. And that's what we're going to be focusing on here, those two names that are going to point to us about what this baby's going to be like. So with that said, let's begin. Let's look at the first name, the name that I think we're all going to recognize the most, won't we? Jesus. Now, I think it's helpful as we begin to remember that names have meanings, don't they? I wonder, do you know what your name means? My name, Isaac, it means laughter or he will laugh. Unfortunately, it's been more laughing at me rather than with me. But again, that wasn't specified in the name, so you can't really complain. But do remember that in Bible times, names were a lot more important than how we have them now. They were really important, people would really think about it, and the name that you gave a baby would really speak to what that person was gonna be like when they grew up. So with that said, let's look at verse 21. Do you see why we're to call him Jesus? Well, it says to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. And if you actually translate that into English, that name, it means the Lord saves. The Lord saves. But from what? And how? Surely it's a bit presumptuous to say that I need saving, that that you need saving. Offensive even in this day and age. Well, if you ever think that, don't worry, you're not alone. I think that a lot as well. And when I do, I find it helpful to look at two things. Firstly, to, to look at God. And then secondly, to look at myself. So what do I see when I look at God? Well, I see that he's perfect, awesome, magnificent. I think of all those omni words you learn in junior cert religion. Omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient, all present, all powerful, all knowing. And then I look at myself. Now, to be honest, I'm actually an all right guy. Um, I'm sound enough, maybe give to charity, maybe give a fiver to the homeless lad on the street, but perfect? Far from it. I could never put myself up on God's level. Have I ever once, even just a little bit, cheated or lied or been sexist or racist? Not even once, not even a little bit? I don't like the answers to those questions. Because you see, there's a gap, isn't there? There's a gap between what we do and what we want to do, between what's real and what's ideal, between me and God. That is the problem, the gap. That is why I could never get on God's level. It would be like me, a very average rugby player, let me assure you, putting myself up on par with Johnny Sexton. Like there's just no comparison. Or or water and oil, it doesn't mix. Or newspaper and fire, it doesn't work together. It's the gap between me and God that is the problem. But where does that leave me then? What, What does that mean? Well. It leaves me being pushed away from God, distanced from him at death and from, from everything that's good in the world. It's, it's what the Bible calls hell. And I wish I could sugarcoat this. I wish this Christmas time I could say, just live your truth. Everything's going to be okay. All roads lead to heaven. But I can't. 
Because you see, the Bible says that God is just and that the wrong in this world must be accounted for. The wrong that I commit must be accounted for. It says that I am in need of saving. But that's where Jesus, the Lord saves, comes in. Because you see, at Christmas time, we remember when God came down to live the life that we never could, never messing up. He claimed to be God and he backed it up with his teaching. He backed it up with his life. He backed it up with his miracles. But we didn't believe him, did we? We killed him, hanging him on a cross. That's what Easter is. But there's more to that story, isn't there? Because on the third day, because he was God, because he had never sinned, he came back to life. But of course, we all know this story. What's, what's the significance? Well, when he was on the cross, he was taking my punishment, our punishment in our place, taking the penalty that I should be paying. He was my perfect substitute. And now, because he's risen from it, he offers us a way out. That is why he came, born to die so that I don't have to, so that you don't have to. And then we find ourselves on the second name, Emmanuel. Look at verse 23, do you see what it means? It means God with us, Emmanuel, God with us. And that's exactly what Jesus is, isn't it? God coming down to be a human, literally the creator of the universe, writing himself into the pages of human history. It's mad, but why does it matter? Why does any of this matter? Well, it matters because it is what it says on the tin, that God is with us. He has breached the gap. He's now with me, with you, to be in relationship with us. He knows what it is to be human. He didn't shy away from sickness, from poverty, from death, from pain. He knows what it is to mourn. He knows what it is to cry. He knows what it is to worry. He knows the human experience. It means he can sympathize with us. Has 2020 been a year to forget? Have you struggled this year? Well, in Emmanuel, we find a God who knows our pain, who knows what we're going through, because he's been there himself. It means we can go to him in prayer, and he can sympathize with us and be with us every step of the way. We have Emmanuel, God with us. But why does any of this matter? Any of this matter? We have, we have Jesus, the Lord saves, Emmanuel, God with us, but why does it matter? Well, let me give you just two reasons why this matters. We have a horizontal reason and we have a vertical reason. Firstly, a horizontal reason because it entirely shifts the way that we interact with others, entirely. Because you see, here we have the key to a happy Christmas, to happy relationships. Here, we have the key to forgiveness. Because at the cross, we find two key phrases that change everything. Now, we see, I'm sorry I was wrong. It's okay, I forgive you. I'm sorry I was wrong. It's okay, I forgive you. Now, can you tell the person on your right, shout it out, I'm sorry I was wrong. And I'll tell the person on your left, it's okay, I forgive you. It's beautiful. It's, it's the gospel in action, guys. But here we see it. Because in the book of Colossians 3.13, it says, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And that's what we see on the cross. Jesus there on the cross forgiving us, making a way to deal with our sin. He's the model for forgiveness and an inspiration for how to do it. Because Jesus isn't just a nice idea. He changes everything. And we have a vertical reason as well, don't we? 
because it completely changes the way we interact between us and God entirely. Now we have Emmanuel, God with us. We have Jesus, the Lord saves. We have forgiveness for sins, access to God, help in our pain. He has breached the gap. He is now with us. It's not just a nice idea. It changes everything. So, I wonder what you're going to do with this cosmic game of Secret Santa. Please, would you remember these names? Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Jesus, the Lord saves. We now have hope for a better future after death. A hope for a future with no pain, no death, no mourning, no crying. We have hope for the future now. And we have Emmanuel, God with us. Emmanuel qualified to help us because he's been there himself. Emmanuel, the comforter in the present. So, what are you going to do with this cosmic game of Secret Santa? Please, would you not let this pass you by? Would you investigate this further? Would you talk to the friend who invited you here? Would you come back next week? Maybe would you even get the Bible open with them? See what it has to say with me, with any of us. We'd love to do it. Let me just end by saying that accepting Jesus into my life is hands down the best decision that I've ever made. And it really could be the best decision that you will ever make too. So, what do you think? Pretty good secret Santa, I'd say. Let's pray. God, we thank you for Christmas. We thank you that you came. We thank you that you are Jesus, the Lord saves, and Emmanuel, God, with us. May we remember that now. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Isaac. Great. Well, we're going to um, finish up our service here. I'm going to give a few notices, and then there's going to be a song. And during the song, you can either stay to reflect or you can leave. And at the end of the song, we just ask you all to all to leave. So just a few reminders. Thanks for coming. If you're online, Matthew's going to lead you in some breakout rooms. If you want to stay on after the song, he'll go automatically into breakout rooms for you. Uh, the Lighthouse cards, uh, if you haven't and you feel comfortable and able, do write a card to someone who will receive that who will be homeless this Christmas as uh, some good wishes and prayers and, and something of the Christian hope hopefully can be given to them. Uh, Christmas care packs, sign up if you'd like one. Uh, today's the last day. And if if you want to get in person and you're online this week, uh, we want to try and give you priority. So go ahead and sign up straight away for next uh, Sunday. I'm going to read a um, I'm going to read a uh, a blessing, and as I said, then there'll be a song. If you want to head out now before you know everyone heads out, you're welcome during the song. Feel no embarrassment, or you can stay in your seat and use the song as a chance to reflect. Once the song's over, then uh, I ask, we'll ask you to leave. So let me just read this blessing. May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, the peace of the Christ child, and the blessing of the holy and undivided Trinity be upon you this night and remain with you forever. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great Christmas and enjoy the songs. You can stay where you're seated or head out when you're ready.